The Jays by Kuzu Haiku. The tags for the story are sex, gore, alternate universe, comedy, dark, random, romance, slice of life. A little bit of everything leads to a whole lot of nothing. Bucky Bitter struggles to escape the airborne affections of Derpy Hooves after a chance encounter caused them to bump noses together. His real mistake was trying to comfort the mare after the snoot bump. Little does the poor stallion realize that their meeting was only the prologue to a journey that will not change only his life, but the lives around him forever. And then there's a bunch of shit. Alright, hold on. Um. Oh, whoop, alright. The ponies that star in the story are Derpy Hooves, original characters, uh, Barry Punch, Dinky Hooves, and Sparkler. Chapter 1, with 2,181 words. Bucky Bitters ran for his life. Pursued by the stuff of nightmares, his barrel heaved, his lungs burnt, and his legs fell wobbly and weak, and he still he ran, his pursuer hot on his heels. Bucky leaped over a fence, barely clearing the top rail with his barrel, scraping a rear knee over the rail as his front hooves drove down towards the earth. He could hear some ponies encouraging him to run faster. Other ponies were telling him to stop running and face the music. Bucky Bitters would not stop running. No way! He was young and had his whole life before him. If he stopped running, life as he knew it would end. So he ran, digging deep, trying to find the strength to keep going. As he ran, part of his brain pondered the events leading up to this terrible mess, this confusing jumble of events that made no sense. It had been an accident, a chance encounter, nothing more. Something that could have happened to any pony. He had stopped by work to pick up his weekly pay, not actually on the clock today, with the hopes that he could spend the bits purchasing what he needed for his real passion. Brewing beer! Oh, bottoms up. He had bloomed late in life, his cutie mark not appearing until he was an adult, taking his first sip of fine, well-brewed beer. Oh, bottoms up. And falling in love, hops appearing on his backside mere moments after that first sip. So he had gone to purchase supplies, little things he needed. He had made some idle chit-chat in the supply store, and then he had been on his way, eager to get a start on his hobby. Only things had not gone as he planned. He came out of the supply store, his saddlebags now full of supplies, turned to his left, not paying attention to where he was going, because he's a fucking idiot, and then he had bumped into her. His dogged pursuer. They had bumped snoots together rather forcefully, coming together with a thud, both of them toppling over and landing on their backsides with a thump. He had worried for a moment that he had hurt her quite severely, and it took him several moments to remember that her eyes were always like that. The two had sat for several minutes, looking at one another, at least he thought she was looking at him, and Bucky, being the gentle sort that he was, had reached out and just... Uh, Sorry about that. <laughs> and gently touched her cheek and inquired if she was okay. But when he had touched her, her cheeks had ignited with a fiery red glow. Her eyes grew glassy and bright. Her ears swiveled forward, and she let out a strange giggling moan, a sound that haunted Bucky even now as he was running for his life. The chase. Oh, bottoms up. Fucking stay. Ah, you piece of fucking shit. Fucking pop filter. Stay, you piece of junk. There we go. Ha! 
had started several seconds later, moments after Bucky had wormed free of the Pegasus' powerful embrace. Pegasi were brutes. Bucky Petters knew this, and they did not willingly let go of their prizes or their fancies, and Bucky knew now that she fancied him. He knew that as he struggled free of her giggling love drunk embrace in front of the store, not long after they had bumped into one another. For some ponies, all it took was a simple bump of noses or just the meeting of the eyes, and then life was over. Biological imperatives took over. Bucky's nose had told him that the mare had more than a passing interest in him. Pheromones were terrible things, and Bucky hated them. They denied reason, ignored logic, and were filled with base biological prompts that made keeping your intellectual senses difficult. Which was exactly why the gray male mare was chasing him. The tan unicorn threw Ponyville giggling madly, pleading with him so they could stop the talk, begging him to snoot bump with her one more time. She was clearly a slave to her brutish biology. Oh, please stop! Her bladed, bladed, bladed derpy, her wings flapping, trying to catch the fleeing unicorn. Buggy Bitters did not reply. He couldn't spare the breath. He turned sharply, regained his balance, and then leaped over the flower stall of a mare named Roseluck. Roseluck. Buy some roses for your love shouted Roseluck hopefully, watching the hunted unicorn running away, derpy in hot pursuit. Yeah, buy me some roses, begged Derpy, nearly colliding into a building as she flew after Bucky, her forelegs wrapped around her own barrel and hugging herself tightly, her tail swishing from side to side as she flew. Other pegasi were joining the chase now, cheering and laughing encouraging Derpy to fly faster, swooping down over Bucky and taunting her mercilessly. The brutish Pegasi had mobbed together to bully him into submission, all, in, all of them working together to harass him as he tried to escape Derpy's clutches. I thought some of them were like saying, Hey, run faster, man, you're about to get raped. Pegasi really were brutes. Bucky ran even faster, his fear flogging his limbs into previously unknown levels of performance. Love between unicorns was simple and easy. A little intellectual conversation, a mention of your reading list, perhaps some talk of magical theory, and life was good. Pheromones be damned! There were magical spells that could rid you of such distractions, allowing you to keep your senses and behave like a well-bred and proper pony, not some sex-starved brute. Love between Pegasi involved bruises, or so Bucky had heard. Derpy had caught him once during their chase already, sweeping him into a near bone-shattering hug, squeezing him tightly, trying to whisper sweet words into his ear in between her heaving giggles, her forelegs compressing his ribs almost to the point of breaking. He had squirmed free by sheer luck, falling almost ten feet, and had hit the ground running, thankfully not breaking anything. Bucky knew that if she caught him again, she would fly away with him and he would let her, not wanting to plunge to his own death if dropped from a great height. Pegasi were brutes like that, snatching you up in their clutches and taking your life hostage to their mercy as they flew away. Are they like eagles? Eagles, I want to fuck. Derpy Hooves flew determinedly towards the fleeing unicorn. He was fast, but Derpy had the advantage with her wings. The unicorn would tire eventually, and then they could talk, and maybe snoot bump. Playing hard to get was clearly an invitation, so the unicorn must want to be caught. Derby obliged. It had been a long while since she had played this game. She had bumped into him accidentally, enjoying her day off, out doing a little shopping. Does everybody have this fucking day off? Hoping to find a birthday gift for Dinky, and the best big sister for Dinky ever gift for Sparkler. What? And then, as life would have it, she had bumped Snoot first into the tan unicorn as she was now pursuing, just wanting to talk to him. He had looked at her so tenderly after bumping into her, his face apologetic and sweet. Most ponies didn't look at her in a nice way at all, and very few of them ever looked at her directly in the eye, and she knew why. She was retarded. <laughs> but the unicorn had looked her in the eye for just a moment, his face full of worry, and she saw something in his eyes, and then felt something stir within her heart that hadn't been there in a long, long time. Blood. 
That was a weird joke, I'm sorry. For a brief moment, his face had been so full of concern, and a brief moment was all any Pegasi needed to absorb the information all around them and their surroundings. Even with Derpy's vision impairment, she could rapidly take in details that Earth ponies and unicorns usually missed. She felt bad for Earth ponies and unicorns and their near blindness to life around them, which is why she was so fiercely protective of her own unicorn offspring. They were helpless to the constant threats of the world around them, and it caused Derpy no end of worry. It kind of rhymed. She had tried to be friendly, in the traditional manner of Pegasi, reaching out and giving a hug and apology, as Pegasi approached everything in a physical affection. What? And she had hugged him really hard, too, trying to express just how sorry she was, trying to communicate her deep feeling of regret through the application of pressure into her... She may have added a bit of extra squeeze to her hug, trying to express her physical attraction as well. But the unicorn had squirmed free and ran off because unicorns were snobs. But Derpy was determined that she wasn't going to let a little thing like that get in the way. She would just have to try harder. But to be honest, she didn't know how to communicate with a fleeing unicorn. Her usual approaches had failed. She was able to communicate with Dinky and Sparkler just fine, though. They understood what extra squeezy hugs meant and gave them in return. That's because they're your family. This is just some random fucking dude you met on the road because you bumped into him, and he looked you in the eyes and he had... Worry? Yeah, y you fucking bumped into him. People do that. For some reason, Dinky and Sparkler didn't get along with other unicorns, and this made Derpy sad. But the she was determined to love them even more because of this. She had caught him briefly, giving him an extra lovey Pegasus hug, the sort of hug that Pegasi reserved for special moments and moments of extreme gratitude, apologies, wanting to express physical affection, wanting to express friendship, all of those things that Pegasi could only express in a hug. You know, you could also express these things in words, like, hey, I'm sorry, I don't mean to squeeze your rib cage into dust. Fucking, uh... Um, she had even lifted him off the ground, holding him tightly and closely, trying to let him know that he could trust her with his life, that she would hold on to him, keep him safe, keep him from harm, and never let him go. It was the sort of comforting hug she gave her own foals every day, and they reciprocated their affection. If they didn't get their daily dose of affection, they became moody, and even a little bratty. <laughs> daily dose. Thanks, dog. But the squirmy unicorn had broke free and had nearly broken his legs. Silly unicorn. Because unicorns were snobs and he had spurned her intimate and tender-hearted display of affection, Derby was willing to forgive, though. She had seen what the unicorn could be, briefly, when he had gazed into her eyes. Other pegasi were around her now, cheering her on, none of them louder than Rainbow Dash, who hovered overhead and was pumping her forehoof into the air, hooting wildly, pretending that her hoof was holding this to, this to giant cock. <laughs> pegasi did almost everything as a flock. It was a deeply ingrained part of their being, a practical means of survival throughout the ages, living in a world hostile to the highly edible pony, who was little more than a walking selection of choice cuts, four drumsticks, and a pile of steaks. Wait. Ponies don't have drumsticks. I mean, yeah, you could technically eat a pegasi's wings. Do you think pegasi wings would be delicious? I'd eat pegasi's wings. I'd eat them with some fucking barbecue sauce. What? What? Oh yeah, who was little more than a walking jay? Pegasi stuck together, raised their young together in rookeries, and took the first step in creating those young and highly developed social rituals, public displays, letting every Pegasus in the flock know that the desired target was now off the market. Please do not mess with the future potential mate. I thank you very much, or I will fucking kill you. Derpy's follow fell. Pegasi acknowledged Derpy's display of intention and celebrated her public announcement of a desire for courtship, trying to let the lucky unicorn know that he was such a lucky stallion and that he had been selected for potential courtship. Our Pegasi fucking Sheldon? <sighs> fucking Big Bang Theory, get the fuck out of my head. But the fleeing unicorn had rejected her, her affection and goodwill, because unicorns were snobs. I don't think a society would work like this. It's three different races, each having their own cultural, like, mannerisms and whatnot. 
I don't think a society would work if this was how it was. I don't, I, I, I don't, I don't. Derpy, tiring of the chase, believing that she had given enough time for the public announcement of her intentions to settle into her fellow Pegasi, poured onto the speed and increased her efforts to hunt down her target. Bucky was tiring, his breath going in and out in ragged heaves, his throat burning, and his sides felt like they would tear open at any moment. He was too tired to even try winking. He doubted he could summon his magic anyway, and his saddlebags thumped painfully against his sides. His hooves thudded in the dirt. His pelt worked into a fine, sweaty lather, white foam now visible on his sides and his back. What? It, does he have rabies? And his mouths are... On his... Okay, just as he thought he couldn't run for another second... The chase ended as abruptly as it had begun, with the gray mare ramming into his side in a flying tackle, sending him tumbling into the dirt. Bucky lay on his back, unmoving, hearing the gray mare approach. And then, she was there, looking down at him, smiling broadly, her eyes merry and pointing in two different directions. I give up, muttered Bucky. Aw, I was enjoying the chase, replied Derpy. Derpy gently snoot bumped the unicorn laying in the dirt. Gently this time, trying to send a clear signal that she really was friendly, trying to make her clear her intentions. Bucky lay as still as possible, hoping that the Pegasus mare would not break every bone in his body, also trying to make clear of his intentions, his intentions being that he had given up completely and was submitting to her. As they studied one another, both of them were thinking similar thoughts. Pegasi are brutes. Unicorns are snobs. Haha! <laughs> Racism! Uh, how funny!